Hey, this is the Swedish Ktanad, and today I'm gonna demo an amp, and it's this giant sized mega heavy amp head from Blackstar called the ID Core Stereo 40. It's really heavy. Let me show you. Yeah, it practically weighs nothing. Uh, it has, uh, well, the name Stereo 40 is to me a bit misleading. Well, maybe it isn't. Uh, it has two separate 20 watt outputs for speakers. And I would like some kind of feature that you possibly some way you could uh, bridge them. I don't know. Because if you're using, as I will do in this video, I'm going to use one uh, speak cabinet only for miking purposes. Um, the volume you get from 20 watts from this amp, uh, I've tried it with my rather loud band. Uh, it doesn't really work. It's, you need more volume. And I think if you could bridge them, if you can have like a 40 watt output. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's supposed to have this, this special stereo features. I will not explore them as much in this video. Uh, I will make another video where I look at the inside the software that you kind of need to adjust this amp. Yeah, I'll get to the controls. And then I will show it in full glorious stereo as well. Now it will be mono. Um, yeah, let's turn it over so you can see the controls. So we have an input jack, of course. We have a stereo out through headphones, simulated speaker output, and an MP3 uh, auxiliary in. Then we have all the different types of amps because it simulates, this is a modeling amp, so it's a digital modeling amp and it simulates several uh, amplifiers and I'm gonna show it to you. And then we have the simple controls of gain and volume. And finally their ISF feature that's uh, in one direction does something to the mids and the brightness of it and in another direction does something else. I'll show it. They are yeah, they are usually saying that one side is more British and one side is more American. I don't know. <laughs> they are different. And there are no other EQ controls on the actual amp. And that's, I don't know. Is that really a smart feature? Um, we'll see. But if you use the inside of software in a computer, there's a three band EQ. So, well, and that's, it has lots of built in effects. We have a uh, modulation, they have a phaser, chorus, flanger, tremolo and we have four kinds of delay so it's a digital analog tape and multi-tap and we have four kinds of reverb as well it's a room it's a hall it's a spring and it's a plate reverb so and they are individual so you can have just a chorus and a delay and just a phaser and a reverb or either one or yeah anything and again, these aren't controllable that much. You have a level control for the effect and you have a tap tempo that works for the effect. So if you have a chorus, you can actually tap tempo the, the rate of the chorus. Uh, again, if you use the inside the software, you can uh, adjust them like any pedals. Then you get a nice presentation and you get all the knobs you're used to having on those kind of pedals. So, well, well. I'll get into that in another video, basically. I'll do another video with the insider software. Yeah, you'll see how it works and how it looks. That's important. Uh, power on and off, and then you have a foot switch, and that's, uh, you can use it in several ways. And the normal way is to have it switch between two different amp models. And you can pre-program them to have settings like in again in the inside of software. Uh, 
and you can choose also in the inside of software this will be a drinking game how many times will i say inside a software in this video you can choose which amps you're switching between so you can have two high gain amps or two clean amps okay let's hear it then i suppose you want to hear it so i will go through it and uh, yeah i'll go i'm gonna show all the different amps i'm gonna just gonna add a bit of reverb the first one is clean warm <laughs> Next one is clean cold. No, it's clean bright. Makes all the sense in the world. I'm plugging the amp into a 1x12 crate uh, cabinet with, a, I think it's called the GK12100. Uh, it's a 100 watt Celestion speaker. And it's mic'd with a Shure SM58. Next we have Crunch. <laughs> Now I'm back to the crunch channels. I'm going to show you the ISF that's been on the in-between setting now. So I'm going to do it fully to the left. <laughs> All the way to the right. <laughs> 
not that dramatic of a difference. Um, so I could really use those EQ knobs, you know. Uh, it's kind of nice that it has a built-in noise gate. I don't know if you notice now, it's very quiet. And it works really well. And you can, uh, again, in the, guess where? In the inside of software, you can adjust the, uh, like the response of the noise gate. Okay, let's listen to some effects. What do we have? So light that it moves when I push the buttons. When you're adjusting an effect, it's green, and when it's on, it's red, if you're not adjusting it. And if it's black, well, who, what do you know? It's actually turned off. So yeah, let's do some delay. First we have a digit, digi that's hard to say, digital. <laughs> If you don't know the difference between digital and analog delay, well, watch my videos about that. Next, we have something that's supposed to mimic a tape. Echo. Thank you. 
that. And there you have it. And finally, finally, we're going to do the different reverb types. So first, there's a room reverb. And since we are in the room, I don't know if I'm he even hearing it. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to create a, I don't know, a high gain lead sound maybe. So I'm um, just I'm going to the OD section and uh, maybe add some chorus and delay and reverb and everything, just to add everything. So if you're still watching the video by now, <laughs> that's what you're gonna get, me creating a sound. Yeah, let's go. the ISF more to the right. I suppose that's the British side. I don't know. More mid-range. You want more mid-range if you play guitar. <laughs> This is what I ended up with. I have the OD1 uh, amp sound and I have the gain at, I don't know, three quarters. The volume is based on the room. And then I added some uh, moderate chorus, some uh, tape delay and finally some spring reverb. Yeah. <laughs>
Okej, okay, The Black Star ID Core Stereo 40. Uh, it's really cheap, that's why I bought it. Uh, I couldn't resist it, it didn't cost anything. And that was brand new. Full price, I think, even. And, uh, yeah. To me, it sounds really good. I don't really, I'm not sure about the clean sounds. Yeah, I, I really need that extra EQ, I think. So, see what I can do about that in another video. But the lead sounds and the high gain sounds sound really good. So I would again like to have more volume so I could use this. I would love to use this as my standalone amp. I wouldn't mind. But the 20 watts, it's a solid state amp, of course. Uh, the 20 watts in on either side, it's too weak. I'm gonna try it with two speakers to see if that helps since you get 20 watts into each speaker. So that could maybe affect it. We'll see. Uh, I will get back to you about that one. But as it is, it's not really loud enough. And since it's a head, well, you're supposed to use it, I suppose, with a band and really loud. Because otherwise it would be a tiny combo. And it isn't. It's an actual head. Uh, the good thing about it being a solid state head is that you can use it with any cabinet in the world. Uh, it's more efficient with uh, 8 ohms, I think. But, well, it's a solid state head. You can plug it into anything. It won't harm it in any way. It's more efficient at some ohmages, but still works with everything else. Uh, this is the 8-ohm speaker. So, that I like it. Uh, I don't like that you can't control anything. But I guess that's what you get for the price. So, you, yeah. See my other video when I plug it into the, oh yeah, the inside of software. And see how you can use that one. So, yeah, this has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd. Demoing the Blackstar ID Core Stereo 40. Hope you found this bearable or interesting. See you. Bye.